Good morning, everybody. Um, let me, let me, it's Sunday, so let me get into some, some Bible scripture real quick. And uh, let me feed your soul. Proverbs 26, 11. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 26, verse 11. As a dog returns to his vomit, so does a fool repeat his folly. As a dog returns to his vomit, so does a fool repeat his folly. There are so many scriptures in the Bible that talk about narcissists and their abusive behavior. But I think this Bible scripture, Proverbs 26, 11, I think is probably the most accurate description, depiction of their behavior. Narcissists, sociopaths, psychopaths, they move in cycles. They move in cycles, y'all, and they repeat the cycles. They just change, they switch victims, but they repeat the same cycles with each victim. And a lot of times they have multiple baby mamas or multiple baby fathers because the child is what connects them to their victim. The child is just the pawn piece. The main reason they get their victims pregnant is not because they want to have a child and love the child. It's because they need to keep their victim locked in place. And that child locks the victim in place. It's either a child or marriage. Okay. So narcissists love to go. They cycle backwards to their old lovers, especially if they have a child with the lover. They never married that person, but they have a child. They want to sleep with that person and they will always want to sleep with this person for eternity. Okay. That's why I tell y'all stay away from men and women with multiple baby fathers and multiple baby mamas. It's bad, bad news. Okay. It means that that individual, they're narcissistic and they need supply and they had to trap their victims with pregnancy to, to ensure that that supply doesn't run out. They can bounce from baby mother to baby mother, sleeping with every baby mother, getting money and everything else. You got to understand the psychology behind how a narcissist, a sociopath, their behavior and why they do what they do. Because they have severe abandonment issues and codependency. They cannot be alone. They don't know how to be alone. Um, Proverbs 26, 11 as a dog returns to his vomit, so does a fool repeat his folly. The narcissist will constantly go backwards. <laughs> the narcissist repeats himself in cycles. All he does is just, he rotates his victims. Now, when you was with the narcissist, prior to you getting with him, you were strong. You were intelligent, you had good credit, you were traveling, you were vacationing, you were making money, you were happy, you were glowing. You know, you were living life on your terms and doing things your way. And that narcissist, all he did was convince you to let him come into your life. He convinced you that you both can grow together and level up together and quadruple y'all blessings together and build something powerful together. And because you're a good person, a genuinely good person with a good heart, you want to see the good in people. So you let your guard down and you let the narcissist in. It's not because you're stupid. It's not because you're gullible. It's not because you're naive. You know, and another thing, too, if you were raised by a narcissistic mother or father, then they have trained you from the time you were a child to lack boundaries. And to never, you know, um, th this is why we, we, we attract toxic people. If you were taught from a young age to have no boundaries, to let anyone come into your space and have access to you, mom and dad did that. So when you grow up. You, you, you're always going to want to see the good in people, even when they're doing bad. You know, we have good hearts and these abusers know that y'all. 
So what do they do? They trick us to get us to lower our guard. We get into these relationships. They turn, you know, in the beginning, lots of women be like, well, he bought me this. He bought me pocketbooks. He spent money, jewelry. He took me out. I said, that's called ROI, return on investment. He's investing in you to ensure that he gets double out of you because that good treatment is not going to last. He's, he's only doing it temporarily, you know, to trick you into giving your money to him. So he's got to spend money on dates. He's got to buy you gifts and stuff. So to, to, to trick you into believing that he's going to be this giving person, it's called reinforced intermittence, y'all. This bread, this is bread crumbing. This is a, this is a, a manipulative tactic to trick a victim into giving their money and, and thinking like, okay, well, he gave to me before. He's done nice things before. So it's okay if I give him this much more amount of money, even though it's way more than what he gave me. And then, you know, you're going to be looking down the line for him to do. He, he's going to pull back. He's going to stop buying gifts and treating you good. And, and, and he's, going to, he's going to be inconsistent. He's going to start treating you bad. He's actually training you and grooming you to be comfortable with accepting breadcrumbs. So in the future, when he does decide to do something nice for you again, he's going to keep it very minimal. And guess what? You're going to be happy with that little bit that he gives you because he's trained you to be happy with breadcrumbs. That is called reinforced intermittence. So in the very beginning, when he was whining and dining you, buying you flowers and all that, all that was game. I got to toss a couple dollars to trick her into believing that I'm going to be there for her financially and do for her so I can get more money out of her. And that's what we do, ladies. We end up paying all the bills. They trick us into paying all the fucking bills. You're going to end up being the one paying for everything. Paying the mortgage, paying the rent, paying the car note, putting money in his pocket. He's taking your money and he's spending it on the side chick or his down low, down low boyfriend. Because these men out here is cheating with men these days. Believe that. He's going to switch things around so that you are going to be constantly giving out of your pocket and paying for everything. But the way that he does that in the beginning, he, he is going to give money and buy gifts and, and treat you to things. But that be, all of that's going to stop. Then now you're caught in this cycle where you're being a, he's programmed you and broken you down. You're the caretaker. You're the slave. You're the servant. You're the doormat. And he's running the streets doing what he wants to do. And this is where a fool repeats his folly. That dog is going to go back to his vomit. If you catch your ex cheating with someone from his past, a baby mother, an ex-wife, an old girlfriend, that is his behavioral pattern. He cycles back to his old lovers. He, he keeps them in this rotation. He rotates his victims. All he does is he goes, he jumps from one person to the next, using them for sex, using them for money. And when he breaks them and drains them, he's off to the next. He has to juggle and rotate his lovers. This is why these men have multiple baby mamas. This is why these trifling, narcissistic, sociopathic females have multiple baby daddies. They got to juggle and rotate their, their lovers. And the baby keeps the keeps the victim locked down the baby is the reason that they can get on the phone and say hey I'm coming through to see my child when they really want to see you and see what you got for them you got any money give me some sex you got some weed let me hold your car so y'all gotta know how the game works a dog returns to his vomit vomit is poisonous you know, when you eat and your food is digested and broken down in your stomach is because the acid is breaking it down, stomach acid. So when you throw up, regurgitate and throw up the food, you're going to notice that that vomit stinks. It's disgusting. Um, it's poisonous. It's acidic. So I've seen dogs. I've seen dogs actually go back and eat vomit. I've seen birds and dogs eat vomit. That is how you got to look at the narcissist because he has a high school mentality. 
he doesn't know how to change or grow. The only time that he changes is when he needs to be on his best behavior when he's with a new victim. That love bombing phase where he's got to be a gentleman and, 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 and be on his best behavior because he's trying to lock down his new victim. He's only going to change temporarily, but he's going to resort back to his old behavior. So he never grows. He never elevates. Let me tell you all something. Uh, my last relationship with the ex-convict, he served 20 years prior to him going into prison. He was he was juggling multiple girlfriends. He was getting money out of his. He had two baby mamas. There's I don't understand. How do you have two baby mamas and, and you, you just got out of high school? That was indication right there. His behavior was narcissistic, sociopathic, impulsive, reckless. Um, then I found out the news that he had kidnapped his girlfriend at gunpoint. So we, we talked, he's a sociopath. Sociopaths are impulsive. They're very reckless with their behavior. They're above the law. He, uh, he had a whole crew of police officers chasing him on a high speed car chase, which ended up in an almost fatal car crash. So he, he's a sociopath. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. So prior to him going into prison, he already had two baby mamas. What was he, 20 years old? He was very young. Two baby mamas at that age. Couldn't afford either one. Both baby mamas is giving them their money, buying him cars, you know, giving up their money, trying to hold on to him. And the whole time, they can't, a baby don't even keep a man. He's still running the streets, sleeping with multiple women, doing what he want to do. He's in college, sleeping with multiple women. You know, he's being a, a hoe. But this prior to going into prison, he had a sex addiction. He had two baby mamas. And he already had anger problems, violent, aggressive prior to prison. So prison was meant to slow him down. It was, I guess it was God's way of saying, listen, you're going to be punished for what you have done. And and this is the time for you to self-reflect and get your mind right. So he did that 20 years. He gets out after 20 years. He looks me up. We get together. And what does he do? He repeats that same behavior that he did 20 years ago. He was whooping and beating on his girlfriends 20 years ago. That violent behavior, pulling a gun on his girlfriend and kidnapping her. He, 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 over the 20 years, he had not changed. If anything, prison made him worse. Prison made him more animalistic. Prison made him more criminal minded. In prison, he had to adapt a lifestyle in order to survive. So he's in survival mode. And his plan was, let me, you know, once I get out of prison, I'm going to find me a nice girl that I could lay up with and make her, you know, break her down. He wants a caretaker. He wants a mother figure that he can sleep with. He doesn't want a wife. And on top of that, I think it was fucking, you know, he was fucking uh, um, um, men. There's no way for 20 years straight you was you was giving yourself a hand job. He was in there getting blowed and fucking trannies. I'm not stupid. But the point was. He thought I was still, you know, we know each other from high school, high school. Yes, I was a sweet, quiet, shy girl. But while he was doing that 20 years in prison, I was evolving. I was out here in New York, evolving, growing, becoming a businesswoman, um, um, getting my degrees, my bachelor's and master's degree. I had the pleasure of working alongside uh, so many businessmen, executives, celebrities. Like I've been around big money. I've been to, to business dinners. I haven't posted all my pictures and videos, y'all. Y'all have no idea. Like I, I had dinner with Future. You know, the rapper future, I got invited to an executive dinner, all the CEOs and, and uh, record label executives. I've been to dinners like that. I've been around men with money, successful, rich men. So he's the one stuck in prison, stuck in high school mentality mode. So when he comes out of prison, he's still expecting me to be that girl from high school, the gullible, shy girl that's going to do anything he tells me to do. He, he doesn't even know the side of me that's bossed up and has leveled up and, and, and you know, um, I've been, you know, all these businessmen here in New York have taught me so much game. So the moment that I stand up for myself, 
and, and I show him that I have boundaries and I'm not going to tolerate his disrespect. I've tried to leave the relationship several times. When he raised his voice at me and I didn't feel safe around him, I tried to leave. And I paid for it. There was, you know, he body slammed me and strangled me when I was trying to get away from him. But he didn't like that tough woman side of me. He didn't like that I had a backbone. He didn't like that I had high self-esteem. He still had envisioned me as that young, dumb, gullible, fat girl from high school. And I was, I, I have evolved past that woman, that young girl. He does not know how to handle this, this boss chick. He does not know how to handle this mature woman with, with, with the mentality. I don't have no motherfucking high school mentality. I'm, I'm trying to get to the top. I'm trying to get to the millions. And honestly, I'm lowering my standards to get with you because I have been around high quality men. Y'all saw the pictures of DMX. Me and DMX have been out many times. I've had dinner with DMX. I've had business dinners with DMX. So what can a fucking bum from prison teach me when I done been around a real nigga already with money? So the fact that he saw that business side of me, he saw that I had a backbone, he saw that I you know, had high self-esteem, his job was to break me down and bring me down to his fucking piece of trash level. And then the whole time cheating on me with the baby mama. Why are you cheating with her when your son is a grown man? His son is grown and married. So why are you sleeping with the baby mama? You don't have to give her no child support, no, no diapers, no milk. Your son's a grown man. So you basically fucking with her because you want to fuck her. So you're going back to the vomit like a dog. A dog returns back to his vomit. He told me the baby mama's crazy, toxic, but you still fucking her. You still fucking her. You get out of prison. The chick didn't even get you set up in an apartment. You got to go back to your mama's house. You come out of prison. The chick is not there to help you buy your, you know, the things that you need. Your daughter taking you to Walmart to buy you soap, underwear, all that. Where, where's the baby mama at? You get out of prison. You got 20 years worth of, of, of speeding tickets. Tickets that he, he didn't pay. So he can't even get his driver's license. Where's the baby mama? Why didn't the baby mama pay off your driver to you? You know, your driver's license tickets, all of that. No, but he comes to me. He wants me to help him get off his feet and do all this shit for him just so he could be disloyal and go sleep with her. And she had a baby on him while he was locked up, but he still went back to the vomit like a dog. He ran back to that poisonous, toxic vomit as a fool repeats his folly. A dog will return to his own vomit. So let me tell you something. And a narcissist is not capable of changing. They're not capable of growing and elevating because they have a high school mentality. Only a fool will repeat his foolishness. When I caught him cheating, he walked up to me and, you know, I, so I, I looked him in the face. I said, so this is what we doing? You had me leave New York City to come to South Carolina so you could fuck my life up like this? This a game to you? This ain't, this ain't no game to me. You know, he said, what you want me to do? That's my baby mama. He didn't know from that day forward he was dead to me. He really thought he was going to be able to come back and talk to me. No, that day that he looked me in my face and he said that to me, I murdered him in my brain. I said, you're dead to me. You're dead. There's no coming back. I don't want no friendship. You're trash. Don't you, you, you invited me. You interrupted my life to come fucking help you level up. But you still run into your past. The same past that ain't elevate you and got you nowhere in life. And then he's surrounded by his mama and toxic family. They, they crabs in the barrel. Their mentality is crabs in the barrel. They not futuristic. I'm on to the next level. I'm futuristic. I'm trying to go somewhere and get to the millions, nigga. But you playing games? You cheating? You running back to that old shit? Okay, so Proverbs 26, 11. As a dog returns to his vomit, so does a fool repeat his folly. You, got, you can't build a future with somebody with that type of mentality. They're, they're low vibrational and they will never see past their dysfunction. They are comfortable with their dysfunction. I don't care what he tell you. He might talk shit about his ex-girlfriend. He might dog his baby mama, but he keep running back. He keep running back to it. So what does that say? He's never going to grow past his high school mentality. And you got to leave him there. I promise you, ladies, you can do better. You cannot build a life with, with someone that is immature and they do not have the ability to grow with you. And they've shown you with their actions where they'd rather be. They'd rather be with the toxic shit. So that's where you fucking leave them. All right. 
that's my morning Sunday message. I'm going to drop two more videos tonight. You guys stay tuned. I love you. Thank you for supporting me.